All right, welcome to the table tonight. We are going to continue our discussion on um, what happened after the empty tomb because there's mm-hmm. so much that has happened after the empty tomb. Everybody thinks that's the end. I mean, it's like we celebrate Easter and then that's kind of it. Everybody goes on their own and there's that's where everything happens and you need to, I that's love where it all started. Mm-hmm. I love to I love to teach in the same season kind of which we're not exactly the same, but you know, um it's good to know what was going on right now, which really Pentecost hasn't happened because that happened 50 days after we're a little ahead of it. But, um, you know, we just, we wanted to go on from the empty tomb. But yeah, Pentecost is, is let's see, he rose Pentecost. Is it already been Pentecost? Yeah. <laughs> it has been Pentecost. Never mind. I don't know what I was thinking. I was sitting here thinking. Um, it has been but, Pentecost. Yeah. So right now we are in the early church. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I've been sick, and so I've been studying, and I've studied. She's full. I've studied the kingdom that's coming, so we're going to be studying that soon. We don't know half of what the Bible says about what is to come. We think heaven is um, our final resting place, and it's not. We have a new kingdom that's coming, and we will be ruling that kingdom with Jesus. And we have, I mean, this is how you get your position. So if you're just sitting back, not doing anything, uh, you're not going to have a very high position in the new kingdom. And I'm t- we'll teach on that more. I'm learning. And I've been in here just going a mile a minute talking about all the stuff that we're going to, you know, um, get to see and get to do. So, But we're going to talk about how I get started. And that's what the early church. And that's what we today are supposed to look like. Um, so the, the tomb is empty. We've went to Pentecost. The mm-hmm. Holy Spirit has got mm-hmm. a tongue, some flames on on everybody. And so... Um, when I watched our vi- our po- podcast back, I missed a, a thing that you said that I wish I would have um, caught. When we mm-hmm. talked about it. you were saying, you know, can you imagine what how seeing that having that happen to you, and then what your life would look like mm-hmm. because that happened to you? And so that is it does happen to us. It's supposed to, um, and and I guess right now there's just a bigger urgency for me to talk about Jesus because I do believe we're in the last days. And so I think the experience now, because like you talked about how it took you years before you mm-hmm. felt, felt like you came into where God, mm-hmm. well, I was nine, but I mean, I always thought about it, but I mean, I didn't live, I didn't have any fruit. I didn't have a relationship or anything just when I needed him. Yeah. And so now that I am here now and in, in this part, like I'm afraid you're not going to have that time that we had mm-hmm. you know you're not going to have those years to grow up I mean it's it's basically you're going to accept Jesus as your savior and we're going to be up out of here real soon so um there is an urgency it, there's an urgency with your family members there's an urgency with your spouse and your kids it is the most uncomfortable conversation that you'll ever have with anybody telling them about Jesus um but it's because we don't talk about, you know, it, it is just Satan. That's what he does. He makes it uncomfortable. He makes it weird to talk about it. Um, but it doesn't matter. You are going to have to sacrifice yourself, your heart to um, humiliation because that's what happens when you share Jesus is people humiliate you. They talk about you. They do the same thing they did to Jesus. And so... You have to understand that, that, that that's what your calling is, and you have to get that perspective that you don't care what your family says, you don't care what, you know, anything. Like, you have, if you've been called to speak about Jesus, which we have, and there's an urgency, then the people who don't know Jesus around you, they're going to perish. But you've done your part, and so that's yeah. that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. You're supposed to plant that seed, um, and then the Holy Spirit takes over from yeah. there. Well, it's your faith. So, like, for mm-hmm. me... The Bible promises that he, if he starts a good work, he's going to finish it. And so, you know, most of your kids you took to church, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, when you were young, or they had some part of it. He will, your faith, it, it, it's almost like a free, it's almost like a blessing that he gives you for your faithfulness for praying for your child. Mm-hmm. So 
it's almost like for moms, I'm just going to say this, how much do you want your child to be saved? And, and that's how much you should be on your face for your child because it is a big deal now. Their life does depend on it. I, I've never felt like I, like there was an urgency to get this out. Yeah. But that is, my, I'm heavy. And um, it, it, it's just heavy. It's just, it's time. It's time. And, it, and the world is getting worse. And I think that that will, if you go ahead and you start planting the seed of Jesus now, as the world gets worse, that's what will use them you keep saying, you keep telling them, pointing them to Jesus every time they talk to you. And that's what will bring them back. Your faithfulness in prayer and just the fact that you're planning that. See, that Holy, Holy Spirit's faithful. And you have to, mm -hmm. you just, you have to know that it's big faith. So, and I think big faith was what the church had because they had just seen a risen just Lord. Just been through that. Yeah. <laughs> they saw the risen Lord. They saw him ascend. Mm -hmm. And then they saw the Holy Spirit yeah. come down. So like your life has to yeah. be on fire. And so we have to look at that. Like when we accept Jesus, we get the Holy Spirit. Now, you're not going to get a tongue. I didn't get a tongue or a fire or a feeling or anything like that. Um, so the evidence of your, that the Holy Spirit's there, like you have to see if the Holy Spirit's there. Because some people come to Jesus on emotion, you know, like um, a lot of kids bank their salvation. I don't know how we got on salvation, but anyway, I'm going to finish this because obviously <laughs> this was, is not scripted. Um, but a lot of people bank their salvation on like, you know, vacation Bible school. Well, if me and Lisa were 10 or 11 and Lisa, maybe she was really feeling a tug and her parents had been talking to her and putting into mm -hmm. her, but, but me, whose parents don't go to church and don't believe they, they weren't really saying anything to me. So I was just doing what Lisa was doing because she was doing the right thing, but it didn't really yeah. penetrate my heart. So there's a lot of people out there walking around like that. Um, you will be possessed by the Holy Spirit if you are living in the Spirit. I can't say any other. I can't say because it says like a like a rushing river. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're so full, you can't help it. Can't help it. You hush. can't help it. I can't help it. People are like, "Is that all you talk about?" I can't <laughs> help it. Yeah. That's um, all she talks about. Four years ago, no. <laughs> four years ago, no. I didn't talk about it at all. Yeah. I didn't even think about it, really. I was still living my life and, you know. But um, but now, I mean, I just, I've seen what he's done in me as far as, like, from the inside out. And so, that's what you're looking for. The early church. Um, they were changed. Yeah. And so, therefore, they didn't have a choice. And, and they didn't want to sin. Like somebody says, everybody's so worried about everybody's sin. If everybody would just teach or preach the empty tomb and let the Holy Spirit do his job, we'd all be better off. And, and most of the time, the people who are attacking your sin, they're full of sin. And so you have, to, you have to just bleep all that out. And the Holy Spirit will let you know. I mean, do you think since you've sat down at the table and you've been in the Word, do you feel like the Holy Spirit has spoke to you and I, and like you've kind of just wanted to lay stuff more. down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had, I had that before, but it's yeah. even more so now. Oh yeah. The more, the closer you get to the Lord, you see all the things that we do that we participate in just on a daily basis. Well, and routine. just learning from sitting at the table and learning, like you, you learn to recognize the Holy Spirit when he's talking to you. You learn to recognize that enemy too. Yep. We've done and, that. And yeah. And so like, I would have never known a couple of times, like the enemy came straight for my daughter a couple of weeks ago, just small little things, you know, just the, and nobody thinks that it's those little things that those people that he puts in your path or, you know, that's how Satan works. He is putting everything to get you all focused. And so she was trying to, he was trying to get her all focused. And because I've been sitting here, I was able to recognize it mm -hmm. and point it out to her. And then we talk through it. And so now she is, I think she's, she's stronger and can understand now that she's got an enemy. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I never looked for the enemy. And I think, um, the Not biggest age, no, at all. and at this, at, I feel like if I would have had somebody telling me how to live in the spirit, it's not cause I know, I mean, this is just what the Holy Spirit's done in my life. He rescued me. So like, this is just what happened. Mm -hmm. And I was obedient to his word. Um, but this is for everybody. Everybody has a good work. Everybody has a, you're a kingdom worker. And um, we all have that. And so nobody believes that though. Like I had to tell you for months that you had stuff in you that you didn't know, that you didn't yeah. see because the world's beauty and the world's um, women, they love 
worldly women. And so when you get a, when you get a, when I start seeing those godly traits come out in people, I point it out mm-hmm. uh, because I need them to see that because nobody nobody tells them. I think that if, if we spoke truth over people and said, "I know you can do this," mm-hmm. and help find some what their strength is, um, and you encourage them and you help them get there, do you know how much success we would have as Christians? It's helped me tremendously. Just having somebody mm-hmm. speak truth over you—you mm-hmm. you know, the, everybody else sees all your flaws. I don't need somebody to see my flaw. Yeah. I need somebody to see what God sees. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's what I try to do to, for people. So the early church was on fire. They were completely full of the Holy Spirit. They were sharing their things and mm-hmm. just come over for dinner, you know, like, you know, they were they were selling property. They were and that mm-hmm. is how the gospel got taken mm-hmm. along with when persecution came, they scattered as well. So Lisa's going to teach on, so I, 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 con- I contact, I told Lisa, I said, I think I teach too much. I think I talk too much. No, so she's super quiet and she, so I'm, I'm said, I want you to teach on the early church tonight and uh, here we go. Here we go. It's always good. And so at this time, that's when we just talked about the Pentecost and the Holy Spirit came upon them. They spoke in tongues. And so after that, you know, there were a lot of people who uh, were part of that and who witnessed that. And wanted to be part of the church and what was what they had started. And so something that I've never really thought about is like I've always thought, you know, the Old Testament and New Testament, they were always there. They mm-hmm. weren't. Right. They didn't so have anything. They didn't have this. And so and, um, and, and I believe that's why the Holy Spirit had to come in a form of a of mm-hmm. a tongue and a flame. And that's why the Holy Spirit allowed healing mm-hmm. like that. Like from a shadow of Peter, you know, they were just hoping just for, for, to get in the shadow of Peter to be healed because that's how the God, that's how the, they didn't have this. And so like right now the word of God is complete. Mm-hmm. So, you, you know, can't add you can't add or take away from it. So I feel like that's why we don't have a tongue on top of our head, you know, walking around because there was no scripture that explained how to do it and how to feel and, and what it was going to do. And yeah. So like all that. they had was the old Testament and then they had, um, the testimonies, um, of the um, apostles mm-hmm. and their teachings on Jesus. Yeah. And so, their experience. Yeah. Experience is the best. Mm-hmm. It is. Your Holy Spirit is the best teacher. Like you think about your favorite teacher from elementary school. He will be your favorite teacher. I used to get on people all the time because I'd be like, you know, you hear songs about Jesus being your friend and that would offend me because I'd be like, he is not a friend. He is your Lord and your <laughs> Savior and you are to respect him. And so now... Thank goodness he's my friend. <laughs> he's my best friend. <laughs> he is my best friend. And, um, you know, so you learn as you go and, oh, goodness. But, yes, thank goodness for the Holy Spirit because mm-hmm. he wants to teach you how to do this life. And so the early church, they would um, meet in usually two p- places, mm-hmm. the um Temple courts, mm-hmm. or in here, their, I got a picture their... of it right here in this book from Walmart, right, right yeah. there. Right I still there. need to get that book. Yeah, right there is where they met. It's yep. it's kind of on the on the on. Well, I don't know if it's your left side or my. It's, it was just in the temple, and they would just meet there. And it wasn't like a porch. It looks. It was just under some some columns, and they would meet there. And so, like people would come and mm-hmm. hear them. So, I guess there was a lot of preaching going on in the temple from different people who ever wanted to preach. I guess, and uh, they just went over there. So it caused a lot of mm-hmm. issues because there was, a, like, at one day, it was how many people? 3,000? 3, 3,000. Mm-hmm. Every day it was, like, added, yep. you know. Um, the earliest letter from the apostles didn't appear until two decades after the birth of the church at Pentecost. Yeah, because they had to have time. They're, they're living this out. So there mm-hmm. was, no, you know, there was nothing to write yet, you know. Yeah. So it was it was after, most mostly after everyone had had been martyred, like Luke, the book of Luke. He was a doctor. And so he went around um, investigating and asking and interviewing, and he's very thorough. The book of Luke is very thorough, whereas you see that Matthew and Mark, they were uneducated fishermen. Yeah. You know, so, so there's a difference in your Gospels and how, how they write. Mm-hmm. and, and with Based on personalities mm-hmm. and yeah. experience. Some give lots of information. Mark gives none. Mm-hmm. You know, he's very short and gets right to it. He it's like an urgency. Maybe code. I would like Mark. <laughs> no, I think he was just like, I ain't got, I'm a blunt texter. So, yeah, we, we probably are. We probably like Mark. Um, so the Church of Jerusalem took the apostles' teaching on Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth 
as the hope and consolation of Israel. And so I looked up the word consolation. And so that means the comfort received by a person after a loss um, or disappointment. And so that brought me to Luke 2, 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And so you see that consolation there waiting for the consolation mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ mm-hmm. in both like of confirming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. the whole they I don't that's really weird. Like how did they know how did to they stay know? there? Mm-hmm. And so like and, and and then there was another one. I mean several times there have been promise of the Savior, but you know, some that would just teach in the in There was the, a woman that was yeah, there the too. Temple. Her name was yeah. Anna. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she she walked and recognized and I mean, you know, so like maybe we can save that for when a pastor comes on mm-hmm. and we can ask those questions. But it's so exciting. Like the early church, so the the early that's what they called themselves. But during this time, they're they're all living together. They're all eating together. They're all working together. Mm-hmm. They're like a compound, you know. And they all are like minded. Mm-hmm. They all have one goal. They all I mean so like when you started believing, you it ain't like today, like if you join the church, you know, you come on Sundays. Like you joined, this was like they you were joined all the say There was no church building. You went to you. Everyone went out to snatch souls. Mm-hmm. That was it. That was what your whole goal is. Not listen to worship and or complain that you don't like the song or anything like that. None of that stuff took place. Yeah, you were the church, and you went out and you told about an empty tomb, and that's how it was added mm-hmm. because the Holy Spirit spoke to these people, and they were on fire, and so. It worked that one day we will be the early church. We will not have division. We won't have a black church and a white church and a Hispanic church. We won't have one that speaks in tongues. We won't have one that don't do nothing or, you know what I'm saying? It will be all one. It will be beautiful. There won't be division. It'll be what it's supposed to be. It's the way it's supposed to be. That's right. Um, so there were basic tenets of the early church. Um, they were fellowship, breaking bread, prayer, generosity of service, um, and worship. Mm Mm-hmm. And so fellowship wasn't just like um, some type of like social activity. This was, you know, they were together. They were a community. Genuine love. Yeah. Genuine Um, love. And the Greek word for um, fellowship is, I'm going to mess this up, koinonia, which means oneness or commonality or true community. Um, Jesus prayed that his followers would be one with him and the Father just as he... um, and the Father are one, and so that's John uh, seventeen twenty one, that all of them may be one, Father, um, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. You know, G- everybody, I'm going to go back to this. Everybody always talks about God is this loving God, and he is a loving God, but he's also a just God. Mm-hmm. And so, so the early church, in order for them to, to preach the gospel, they had to offend mm-hmm. everybody standing there that was doing things wrong, right. the wrong way, not because they were being arrogant or anything like that. And, and, I, and I think that a lot of times we go after people's sin, and I'm learning. The Holy Spirit's teaching me not to do that. Mm-hmm. Don't go after sin. You teach them about me, and when the Holy okay. Spirit is there... Then he'll worry about the sin. Like we can't worry about what everybody's doing. Mm-hmm. Like you worry about yourself. You take my Holy Spirit jerks a knot in my tail. He don't <laughs> let me go very far. Mm-hmm. And you know um, he's very gentle. He's on. He's my team. Like he's on my team. He's for me. He's my best friend. Literally, mm-hmm. uh, when I mess up, my Holy Spirit. The first thing. I mean, he's he's he'll say uh, that went well. <laughs> you know, because I. I mean, he just does. He talks to me how. I talk. Mm-hmm. Yours will be very soft and, you know, I mean, but that's just it. And you hear like, it in your thought. You? Yeah. <laughs> now, but you'll know, you'll learn yeah. to know when he's serious yeah. because he'll let you, he'll give you over to your sin. Mm-hmm. So if you get caught doing something, that's, that's God revealing. And so you can either heal it and turn from it or you can continue on. That's your choice. So, um, he's very present in your life all the all day long, mm-hmm. all day long. I You're talk never out disconnected. loud. Yeah, I always talk. I, I'll talk out loud, and most of the time, I'm like about to make fun of somebody or say something silly, and and I'll go and I'll be like, "Never mind." He'll be like, and I'm like, "I know, I know, I know. I'm trying, you know." And yeah. people probably think I'm crazy, but seriously, he's it's, been working on me. Um, keep to keep 
from not saying things. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah, the, a lot yeah. lately, and it's not that and it's he's, like he's, you're going to go to hell for these things yeah. because you're. That's another thing. Everybody thinks your sin. Like Jesus took care of my sin, yeah. So I don't have to worry about my sin. Regardless if it, what I was going <laughs> to say was bad or offensive or whatever, he t he's been telling me you, you don't need to say yeah. that. Yeah, like you don't need to say <clears> that. I'll say to him like, Lord, I cuss when I'm mad, like at <laughs> the world. Yeah, you know, like when I when you when all this political stuff, it just makes me so mad. And he's like, it don't even matter, mm -hmm. like. It does matter. It's it is moving us to the places we need to go, but those people don't matter. Like God's in control. We're going to the tribulation. I mean, we're we're going there. Everybody needs to understand that and accept it. We are on our way. When you watch Israel and they're getting ready, they have the red heifers. When they're getting ready, you have to get ready. Mm-hmm. That's, it, it's not going to happen here in the U.S. It's happening in Israel, so we have to watch Israel. They're they're being attacked right now yeah. for preaching the name of Jesus. But you don't see that on our news. Mm -hmm. So you have to search it because it is it is part of a whole plan and everybody, it's just hard to explain. It's so much bigger and it's exhausting for me to even think about it. It took me four years to process it all. I don't know why he gave it to me, but um, <clears throat> it's ugly and awful and that's just where we are. And so we have to act like the early church. We have to put down the boundaries, open the church doors. <clears throat> our pastors here in our town don't even meet together. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you'll never not have division if your pastors can't even get, to, get along, you know, or, you know, I don't know. So hopefully a group of the church will, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, um, break off and get over the the. Jesus came with a sword, you know, to break all that up. He didn't come to be nice, and he came to address sin and handle it um, and take care of it for the ones who want him to, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so so the early church is on fire. They're going around. People are 3,000. Yep. How, and then there was another... Um, breaking bread, so they they did that regularly, um, and this was kind of to signify the Lord's uh, supper. Mm -hmm. um, Matthew twenty six twenty eight through twenty nine says, "This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins." I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Okay, marriage supper, <laughs> right there. There's your marriage supper. Yeah, we Jesus, we will be at the marriage supper when we take that again that is at the rapture and nobody else gets to go to that right it's not in the new it's not in the new kingdom this is before the new kingdom because when when a christian stands in front of jesus that's at a totally different time than the great white throne that's that's at the end we get our reward we come back with jesus with our reward mm -hmm. so um, we will go, we will stand in front of Jesus while after the rapture. That's when ours is. Ours is coming up soon, really. Um, so when we, when, when Jesus, when we're caught up in the air, we'll go up there and we will all give an account for what, what the Lord has given us. He's given us all a gift. He's given us all a good work. And what do we do with it? And so there's going to be a lot of saved people up there that just hand their, their stuff and it's going to completely burn because they didn't really do much mm -hmm. with what God gave them. Um, and then there's going to be people up there with, Treasure after treasure after treasure who sacrificed their life. And, and so you still have time, you know. Yeah. So, um, and not everything is, is heaven bound or, um, you know, blessings come here. Judgment comes here. Some people who go to jail get the death penalty. That's, that's the judgment of God. Do you think that happens without his hand? There ain't nobody that dies unless God allows it. Right. You know, so sometimes his judgment is immediate. Just like, uh, we're get, did you do the, I've got it if you don't, you Ananias and um, mm -mm. okay, so we yeah, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But but you know, um, he doesn't he he's a just God, so he can't let sin go because if he let it go, it'd be he wouldn't be just. He wouldn't be a good judge. So sin had to be paid, and his sin is son. And so therefore, your life should look totally different, and you should be a disciple. Mm -hmm. So, right. um, one of the other tenants was prayer, and so they were um, constantly practicing prayer in the early church yeah. and so acts 1 14 says they all met together and were const constantly united in prayer along with mary the mother of jesus several other women and the brothers of jesus yes. I love all, that part. The, all these were continually united in prayer along with the women including mary the mother of jesus and his brothers yeah so remember jesus's brothers did not believe when he was crucified 
when he appeared to James after he arose. I mean, James knew that he had been crucified, Mm -hmm. seen all of it. And then he arose. And so now James and his other brothers, everybody now is a believer. (laughs) You know, I mean, who couldn't be a believer when you see a risen risen Lord? And so um, so now James is getting ready to be big dog. Yeah. So... Go for, I guess that's just so exciting for me to, to watch James go from a non-believer, mm-hmm. one that said he was demon-possessed, one to lock him up. Not that close to Jesus, and <laughs> you he know, was a non-believer. Yeah, but I don't think Jesus was anything, Jesus wasn't this handsome guy, he was very normal, he wasn't anything, but he didn't turn, nobody knew he was the Messiah. I don't, I don't even believe he did. I believe he found out, I don't even believe that he knew everything, because he was human. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like if he, you know, he felt everything, but I just think that the Lord revealed to him when he needed to reveal it, what was going to happen next. I don't think that when he was, he knew everything that was going to happen prior to the 40 days in the wilderness. And, um, you know, that's just what I, I mean, because he didn't do anything special. Nobody, they didn't even believe that he was the Messiah. So he wasn't anything that caught anybody's eye. And so that's why James didn't believe. He's like, dude, that's my brother. Yeah. He is not God. I used to sleep beside him, you know. <laughs> he pees just like I do. You know what I'm saying? So, like, <laughs> they they were expecting something totally different than Jesus. And, yeah. and that's why they missed him. So, now. What Generosity and service. And so, oh, they yeah. um, shared their belongings. So, it wasn't like there was a pool of anything um, that they just put together. They um, helped those who were in need when they were in need. Um, and then worship, joy overflowing. Um, no matter what location the believers lived in, they lived with one accord and with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. The Lord added to the church daily to those who were being saved. Um, in Acts two forty six through 47, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Mm -hmm. Um, And I like that because, like, when he adds, that's more help. mm -hmm. Like, nobody sat on the sideline. Nobody was like, oh, I've had such a bad upbringing. Nobody was like that. And I'm not getting on people who's had bad upbringings, but there is a time that you lay that down. You're called to be an overcomer. And if you're still... Struggling, and it does take a long time. But at some point, you have to quit because that's what Satan's using. Mm-hmm. You've got to, you've got to heal it. Some won't be healed forever, but you, that will be your testimony. And through talking about it, he will give you healing. So, in the early church, they were so caught up in living for Christ that their lives just—that's all that you could see through them mm-hmm. is Christ. And so, they taught the doctrine of Christ. Um, their fellowship was centered on Christ. They remembered him in communion, um, and they communicated with him in prayer and exalted him in worship. And so that's Constant, basically full, what feel. We, that's what you call feel of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So why are we not like that today? Because our world has put everything in our hand to mm-hmm. keep us from being in the Word. Um, the amusement parks. I mean, good stuff. This is good mm-hmm. stuff. This isn't stuff that's bad for us. But what happens is we have no self-control and we indulge and we just go crazy and we spend and we, and there's no self-control. There's no, some of this is good and the rest of it needs to go to God. Cause like we don't even, we don't even think about God. Right. So, so we are so deceived. I was so deceived. Yeah. And the only, like I We're keep preoccupied people, with everything yeah. and we just don't. Yeah. And it's not anything. Listen, you know, you're, you're different than me. Like. For me, I feel like my turning point was when my dad died. Mm-hmm. So I didn't choose to come out of sin. I mean, I did. But I was backed up against a corner. You know, like, he, I was in devastation. I was in, and I could have very well went on with my addiction. Mm-hmm. I didn't do that. The Holy Spirit did it. You know, like, so I, I can't take any credit. I can just tell you that if you feel that way, then you need to lay down things of the world. And um, I struggle. I'm in, a, I'm in a place where I struggle living, not living, but just being excited about mm-hmm. living life. And, and You struggle now? Or? I do struggle now. I struggle to look forward to anything because it's, it's because I see uh, 
a bigger picture. I know that sounds crazy. I keep saying that. It's it's hard for me to 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 explain that, but it's almost like I see Satan's I see Satan's plan. So I see every, when I look at anything, I see Satan and, and how he's wrapped around it. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think that's just because I teach people now to recognize the enemy, and so and not everything's the enemy. I mean, you ha- there are great things that happen in your life, um, but the majority of the stuff's the enemy. I mean, he wants he hates you. He's, he's, he's going to keep everything good from coming your way. And if he can keep you busy and keep you out of the word, he don't care if you go to church on Sunday, just as long as you don't live it out. Yeah. You know, and it makes you feel good. So he's like, he's deceived you again because you've been called to be a kingdom worker, to be like the early church, to spread the gospel, to share your life, to share in everything, to mm-hmm. help your neighbor, to break bread with your friends. This is the example of what we're supposed to look like and we don't look nothing like it. We don't. Um. So... We're, we're, we get mad at God when, for everything. We blame God for everything. And so we've got to get our minds right. It's like a detox, a mind detox. And I, I believe that that's why he's called me to teach. is because for some reason I can recognize it and see things in right. not, not real stuff. So, but just, I can just recognize when he's trying to deceive someone I, I can come in and remind them mm-hmm. that's satan just like you today on our text you said something and i just said you gotta be careful right mm-hmm. there there's a fine line you know i wasn't like getting on you i was right. just reminding you and let me so that every and i love it lisa does it for me you have to have people speaking truth into your life so you can recognize the enemy because he's good mm-hmm. oh man he's really good so anything else on the early church Mm-mm. so Basically, right now, this is just a bunch of believers who are on fire for Jesus. Yep. No, no order. And it's spreading. Yeah, no order. So yeah. so that's what's going on. And it's catching the eye of all of the Sanhedrin the and the same people who um, said, crucify Jesus. Mm-hmm. So they've caught the eye. And so, basically, I'm just going to touch real close, or just for a minute, um... All of these guys were Jews. So, like, they didn't know what was coming either. They thought the Jews were the chosen, and they are the chosen people. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was about to break that dividing thing down and say, oh, it's not just for the Jews. It is also for the Gentiles. And good, good, because I'm a Gentile, not a Jew. So, um, so, but right now we've got all Jewish believers. And so everything is going good, Mm -hmm. you know, because Jews and Gentiles, I don't, I don't think they meshed very well. And so, um, some were circumcised. Jews were circumcised, and the Gentiles were not circumcised. And so they thought they were unclean. So, and, and, and the reason for the Jews was so we would know who Jesus is. So now that, that Jesus has came and he's died and he's rose, he needs to break that barrier down because now salvation's for everybody. Mm-hmm. So he just needed the chosen people to show us who Jesus was so he could have a people to work through, a bloodline. And, uh, and so now that he's here, he's came, he's everybody. So there's nobody out who calls on the name of Jesus. And that's just amazing. That is, that's love. And mm-hmm. we don't understand that. So, so there is a, the Jewish government council, uh, known as the Sanhedrin, called the apostles in because they started causing a ruckus and commanded them never to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. And so um, this is what this book says. Before long, Peter and John find themselves standing there before the council, after spending a night in jail. So they were arrested and brought into jail. They were arrested the day before after healing a crippled man. You were mm-hmm. going to talk about that, weren't yeah. you? Um, in the temple area. And they were preaching about Jesus to the crowd that gathered. So anytime you see somebody healed, you know, um, people are going to be like, what is going on? So the council faces much problem, or I'm sorry, the disciples had a wide base of support because of the wonderful miracles that they were doing. And... Peter and John, they knew that if they did too many harsh things to to Peter and John, that they could cause a riot because they'd been teaching and these people had been seeing their miracles, and Mm -hmm. so they trusted them. So they had to be really, really careful, and so they told them to stop um, teaching in the name of Jesus, and so this is what Peter says, and I love Meeks and Peter. Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling everything about what we've seen and heard. And that's Acts 4, 19 and 20. So when you've seen a risen Lord, if somebody tells you to quit talking about it, you just laugh at them. You're like, okay. Because you have to remember that a risen Lord, there's power behind that. 
and and we're going to face that, I believe, here in just a little bit. This is, I, I, I like this because this is teaching. Uh, some of us will be called in front of people and told, like it's going on in Israel right now. You can't you can't teach in the name of Jesus over in Israel. They're trying to pass that, or you'll get jail time. So it's coming. And so, what are you going to do when they tell you to stop? Are you going to stop? Right. You gonna go sit on the sideline because they told you not to speak the name of Jesus? Not me. And I guess that's why maybe I'm sitting here because I'm just not going to. I'm going to, I mean, not going to. And so you have to get your mind there. It took me a long time to get there because I didn't know the Bible. I, I, I don't know the Bible a lot. I've just been in the Word. And the Holy Spirit will give you what you need in those times. You know, um, same way with, with the Holy Spirit was giving them what they needed. This wasn't Peter that was standing up against those guys. That was the Holy Spirit that lived in Peter that put a fire under his tail. And he knew. So the council, the council, they threatened the men further, which I'm sure that's a beating, and then released them. Peter and John, uh, they met with the believers and they told them what was going on. And they all prayed for courage to keep on spreading the world to the word about Jesus. So they, they prayed for pray courage. For protection. <laughs> they prayed for courage to yeah. be able to stand. You know, and, and that's what you're gonna have to pray for. They prayed for greater boldness to preach the word and for more signs and wonders. If you could see us before the camera goes. Mm -hmm. You know, we're nervous. We're praying we're, because we take this serious. And so like, this is them. Before they did anything, they prayed. And so the Lord, he's going to lead your steps. He's going to protect you. He's going to do everything. So um, they were sharing some stuff. And I don't want to like spend a whole lot of time because I do want to kind of get um, to Stephen real quick. But, you know, everybody was doing good and there was... Um, a couple that sold their property, mm -hmm. and they uh, it was theirs. Ananias, Ananias and Sapphira, Sapphira, Sapphira whatever. Sapphira. So anyway, um, they had some land, and they were going to sell it. It was their land, and they acted like they gave all the money, but they didn't. And they were they came in separate times to Peter, and Peter asked the husband, "Did you is this? Did you give us all the money? I mean, it was mm -hmm. his. It was his money, but he said he gave it all. So that's the difference. That's a, he said he gave it all, and so." That tested the Holy Spirit, and so he died. He just fell dead right, right there. God just said, zoop, mm -hmm. that loving God that everybody's clinging to, that loves your sin, he zapped Ananias for lying. And then she Point came, blank. Then she came in later, didn't know what had happened, mm -hmm. and um, they asked her the same questions, and she lied as well, and so she fell. Fell dead. Fell dead. For a lie. Mm -hmm. After Jesus. After Jesus. Everybody, everybody's like, oh, no, that's Old, Test Old Testament when Jesus would, or when God would carry out wrath. No, wrath is carried out still mm -hmm. here today. So, um, you know, if somebody, somebody dies a young life, sometimes it's, it's, it's wrath. I mean, it is. It's some of these young people who die, not children, but I'm saying some of these young people who live a life of crime, if, if they end up death penalty or they end up dead or whatever. I mean, it is by the way that they are living. I mean, that's just... Um, verse 11 Acts 5, verse 11 says, um, So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. And so um, Jesus used this to kind of teach a everyone else mm -hmm. a lesson. Um, yep. Somebody had to, had, to, had to have a lesson made out of them. Mm -hmm. I'm scared to death. I like, that's why I have a fear of the Lord. Yeah. Most people don't have a fear of the Lord. You better fear the Lord. I mean, because like, he'll, he'll zap you down just like that. And I mean, it's just because they told a lie. Um, um, this was good. Um, it says the story of Ananias and Sapphira, um, that Satan used, uses these, uh, strategies. Um, the Bible says Satan uses strategies and schemes and his attacks against the people of God. He's constantly plotting ways to destroy the work of God by dividing, um, disgracing, discouraging, and destroying the people of God. So I thought that was, yeah. Uh, yeah. So... I bet that took a minute to get over. <laughs> I mean, I just would have liked to have been a flaw on the, on, on the tent when after, you know, like, oh my gosh, like, and that's, we take that here too. Um, we were, I was talking to somebody today and they were uh, one of the pastors and I was like, you know, this is a dangerous place to be because the Holy Spirit will jerk a knot in your tail if you sit down here and try to be anything else. And it's because um, that's just, 
my experience. Chapter 5 in my Bible um, has a subject or title of lying, lying to, to the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. And he lives see, in you. I think that's where the seriousness mm-hmm. uh, um, comes in is like. It was against the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Because he was, he, I mean, he could have said, hey, I only gave a half of this. But he said he gave it all and he didn't. They kept mm-hmm. some back for themselves. So instead of trusting the Lord that he's going to take care of all your needs. Um, and then we'll we'll end with Stephen. Um, so there was a, you know, everybody's kind of got, um, everybody's kind of together. And so like they, they, they don't, they don't, um, they're all the apostles. Yeah. All the mm-hmm. apostles. And so like they're have they don't really have jobs yet. And so the widows are kind of getting a little bit like some are getting more food than the others. And so they don't want that to happen. And so they, they picked a, um, I think they picked seven. Let's see. How many does it say? I don't know if, if I, I wrote it down. Seven. Yeah. And that were strong and wanted them to be in charge of kind of like different things. Well, Stephen was kind of over the food, you mm-hmm. know, making sure that all the widows and stuff got it. And so, but one day he was, he was just preaching the empty tomb and, uh, you know, they, they're mad. They're mad. First of all, they don't have a body of Jesus. They're still looking for Jesus and all these people going around telling everybody that Jesus has rose from the dead and it makes them look bad and, you know, and all these people are following them, and they they think they're they don't they don't believe Jesus is the Messiah, so they think that this is coming from the devil. Yeah. And um, so Stephen is the first martyr, and basically, he got he. I mean, they just started attacking him. He was like, you know, if we can't shut him up, we're gonna have to kill him. And so they plotted to kill to to kill every one of them. They Stephen they stoned Stephen to death, and uh, which enters Saul. Not, I mean, for those who don't know Saul as who he is, I'm not going to tell you who it is. Uh, mm-hmm. You have to wait. So, um, but there's a man named Saul. And um, he, heard, the persecution started, once they killed Stephen, and they, uh, he was preaching the gospel, and, you know, they stoned him, and he was so calm and collective while they were stoning him. I don't know if he didn't feel it, but that was the Holy Spirit. So mm-hmm. understand that. Like, I mean, I feel like I have to say in, in a period of time of persecution, you have to stand firm because you know that God has you. That's your faith. And so you have to stand there. Your knees might be shaken. But so Steve, Stephen took it because he knew that the Lord had it and um, and had him. And he just, he asked God not to keep, since they stoned him, they didn't understand. He was like, don't hold this against them. They don't know. Same thing Jesus did for us. So um, so Stephen is the first martyr. And, you know, that I'm sure that sent shockwaves to everybody. It scared everyone. And so some of the church, some of the early church, decided to, like, leave. Well, that was a problem because they were taking this false gospel of a risen Lord to wherever they were going. Mm-hmm. And so Saul comes up with an idea, and he says, let me go hunt them. And they were like, okay, you can go hunt them. And he said, well, we've got a group going to Damascus. So you can go after them and kill them. So no, so so the gospel can't be taken. I mean, they just, they thought it was a false gospel. Mm-hmm. So they didn't know, G- and they didn't know Jesus was the one. So anyway, so uh, so Saul packs up and he heads to Damascus, and that's kind of like where we'll in- we'll start next week. Um, okay. We're in jail today, so I love the background, and um, you know, Peter, we may find ourselves one time in a in a. In a in a jail cell. You never know. Because, I mean, if, if they're doing it right now with Israel, it's... USA's falling, guys. So, the only thing that you can stand on is the Word of God. Because there's nothing else to stand on. You're going to fall if you stand on anything else. So, get in the Word. Read Acts. It's an, it is such an adventure. I mean, right now we've had... We've got the early church, and they're all selling their stuff. And two people just dropped dead because they done made, you know, lied against the Holy Spirit. And then, you know, Stephen was murdered... I mean, it's just like bam, 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 bam. The lame so. man. Oh yeah, you were going to talk about that real quick. That's okay. No, go okay. ahead. What was what was he? Um, he... So he had been at the um, temple gate. It was called Beautiful. The, that gate was called Beautiful. Yeah. And um, so he had been disabled since birth, and Peter and John came up um, going to the temple to worship, um, and he begs them, as he does everybody that passes. And um, Peter and John, um, or Peter, um, says, this is Acts 3, 6 through 11, um, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. 
And so uh, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. And then he went uh, with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. Now this was a man who had never, ever been able to walk or jump yeah. or anything and so instantly he's able to and, like and bypass just walk yeah and everybody like, knew that yeah. he was he he was he couldn't because he they he had wore them out every day mm-hmm. to help him yeah and the one of the other things that stuck out that i what i was reading was um it was like a jewish a spiritual law mm-hmm. that you couldn't pass up a beggar and not give them something mm-hmm. something and so um they believe that is this the one with the at the pool is that where the mm-hmm. lame man at the pool? No, he's at the gate. He's at the gate. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know that there was, um, I don't know, what, there's, no, this was one of those earlier, but um, this was when Jesus was, but they thought that the angel came down and st- stirred mm-hmm. the water. And so that's why everybody was fighting to get to the, they believed in stuff like that. They were very, very pagan, very mystical, crystally, like, you know, don't, yeah. that's, that's witchcraft. All that's witchcraft. I know that that, like, they really want you to focus on that stuff. And there, it really is healing properties. Absolutely. I believe all of it. It's just the wrong kind. So, you know. So, um, when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate yeah. called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened with him, happened to him. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. Mm-hmm. Um And so, like you were saying, like everybody knew who this was. And Mm -hmm. so they could not deny that this man had been healed. Yep. And so that's why the the guards had to be really careful about how they handled Peter and John. Because if they tried to do anything a lot, then there would be a riot. And so they they didn't like discord. They didn't like uh, chaos or whatever. And so they were... But it was like Jesus stirred stuff up, you know. I mean, and he was... He came to... To, that's what he came to do, yeah. you know? This man was being made whole for the first time in his mm-hmm. life. And you better believe his life mm-hmm. was totally different. That's what it is. None of us yeah. have really encountered the healing of Jesus of our sins. Mm-hmm. We don't understand that. Like, we want to, and I think that that's good. I think he, But I think once you've, if you've been delivered from sin, something that you never thought that you would, or that you would, you always thought, like, Brittany, for you, I'm going to use you as an example. Um, 12 years ago, Brittany was in one of our, our, uh, sound girls, she was in a wreck and, um, with, and the girl that was driving passed away. So, uh, Brit, I've been, I've, she's worked for me for 17, well, you know, close to, so anyway, around about almost 17 years. And for 12 of that, she has sat down and been scared to drive and to live out of fear, you know, and, uh. It has really just made her a prisoner of life. You know, there's no life there. And the she's Lord, living now. Yeah, the Lord. She's driving. She got her driver's license. <laughs> and it ju- she just needed, she needed some time to heal. Mm-hmm. She needed just Jesus. And so Brittany will never live. Once Once she's completely done where she, and I can't wait to watch it because I've, I've watched her go from one to another. But like when you go from, here of bondage of Mm -hmm. where you think you're going to, there's no hope for you. Mm -hmm. And somebody comes, which is Jesus and rescues you from that. You can't go back. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're made new. You're, you're delivered. And so I pray that you find that if you don't feel that in your life, I just started feeling it. I was, but I was saved my whole time. But until it took a, a bad situation for the Lord to come and rescue me and, and this. Mm -hmm. So, this is available for you. Um, the Holy Spirit walking in the Spirit is the only way. Mm-hmm. It is. If there's so much joy and peace, and your circumstance may not change. You won't. You won't get tons of money and all this stuff. But but through whatever life brings you, there will be joy and peace, love, kindness, gentleness, self control. I mean, everything the Holy Spirit gives you, like it's true. It's the Bible's true. So um, pray to look like the early church. I want to. I don't want division. Mm-hmm. I don't want division. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what de- what you are. I, what I, denomination? No, no. We, I just want somebody to help teach Jesus with us. You know, like mm-hmm. we need a group. We don't have a group. We have we have just a small group. 
we're waiting on people to come and join so we can make a big, huge movement here in our town and back in yours. You know, that's what it is. And it's probably, if you're watching this and you're under this, it's probably you that he's wanting to do it for you to hear this. So there's your calling. Mm -hmm. If you're teachers. So anyway, get there's in your nudge. Your Christy yeah, there's nudge. your, there's your nudge. Um, yeah. He's on me too. Listen, I'm, I'm not, I'm not just, you know, we live this out and it's hard. I was telling her today, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do because when you start laying stuff down, not that you have to, I was saying like, I, I watched, we used to watch the bachelor. My husband loved it. We always did. We, I mean, we were home. And so when I got in the word of God and, you know, he started like changing the way I think and stuff like that. Then when I sat down to watch The Bachelor, I couldn't watch it because mm -hmm. it was everything against the marriage that, that God created. And so it's not that you, you don't live by a list of rules. Your Holy Spirit, like you love your Holy Spirit so much that you don't want to hurt it. You don't want to grieve your Holy Spirit. Yeah. And you get tired of fighting sin like you're battling your bad choices. I'm tired of being on the battlefield for stupid things that I do. <laughs> I'm, you know, and there'll come a point where you have spiritual maturity and you'll be able to do that. So, but getting in here is, it's just exciting. And I wasn't always like this. And Lisa wasn't like this. And Brittany wasn't like this. And Lisa wasn't like this. I mean, you know, they sit here every week, but I mean, man, they, they bring it like this. Mm -hmm. I'm in prison. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, it's pretty cool. So mm -hmm. I just can't wear green. So. I almost wore green <laughs> yesterday, and I and I was like, oh, yeah, well, you would have been you'd have yeah. been a prison guard. Okay. All right, so we'll be talking about Saul uh, next week, okay. and um, seeing if he's going to go get those people in Dam on the Damascus Road to see if he gets them or not. So we'll see you next week.